Since the 1970s, billions of barrels of previously unattainable oil have been produced using CO2 Enhanced Oil Recovery, or EOR. But one oil company has made CO2 EOR its business. Southeast Montana, the year 2010. Denbury acquires the rights to produce the oil in the Bell Creek field. During decades of water flooding, the field's oil production had been dwindling from over 10,000 barrels a day to just a few hundred barrels a day. But the new operator would bring a new approach to oil production in Montana. Denbury is a very unique kind of company. Our primary focus is to buy old oil fields, flood them with carbon dioxide and recover additional oil. Or you could say we bring old fields back to life. So quite different than the mainstream oil and gas company of today, which basically are chasing shells and fracking and drilling wells. We don't do that. We inject CO2 and that's our core strategy. And so everything we own today is either a current EOR flood or a future EOR flood or an asset that produces CO2 that of course we use in the process. We're centered in two regions. Gulf Coast consists of Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and a little bit in Alabama. In the north, we have Montana, Wyoming, and a little bit in North Dakota. We're centered around the areas where we have CO2. So to do the EOR process, you have to have available source. The Gulf Coast source is naturally occurring geologic CO2 produced from Jackson Dome in Mississippi. In the north, the carbon dioxide comes from human activity, stripping CO2 from natural gas and helium at two gas processing plants. Those plants are currently taking raw natural gas, and processing it to pipeline quality, and they're removing the CO2, capturing it, and transporting that CO2 to the Bell Creek oil field. We have a CO2 pipeline that comes up through the central part of Wyoming. We have another facility that we bring CO2 from. Those two pipelines come together in Natrona, and then the pipeline continues up to Bell Creek and that is what delivers the CO2 to the field. The pipeline infrastructure is specifically designed to transport CO2. It is not a crude oil line that's converted to CO2 use. It was designed specifically to move CO2 and to transport it and, and falls under the DOT regulations as, as many other pipelines do. So Bell Creek is the first EOR flood that we've done in the Rockies. We've invested several hundred million dollars already it's a big part of our future. Bell Creek is a, a very significant field for us in the Rockies. Denver acquired Bell Creek in 2010 with the acquisition of Encore. And at that time, the field was on secondary recovery, so on water flood. Over the next three years, Denver refurbished wells and existing infrastructure, added CO2 pipelines, and built gas and liquid handling facilities to rejuvenate the Bell Creek field. We have injection wells and the associated piping with those that we take pressurized CO2 and we inject it into the ground via these injection wells. Imagine a series of vertical wells with the center well being the injector well. And now we're going to push that CO2 out to the, say, the surrounding producer wells. The CO2 will travel through the reservoir, displacing oil and water with it. The producing wells bring fluid to surface. From there, we actually test the wells to see how much oil, how much water, how much CO2 they're producing. That fluid is then brought to our main facility. And in that main facility, we're separating out CO2 from the oil and water. CO2 starts to break back out into a gas when you lower the pressure. We separate the CO2, get rid of any other impurities, and re-inject the carbon dioxide and do it again. So we will usually put CO2 through the rock or flush the formation as many as five or six times before we're through. After the CO2 is removed, the oil and water are separated. As the water is taken off, it is re-injected back into the reservoir, and then the oil is ultimately stored when it's at pipeline specifications and can be shipped out via pipeline. The recycled CO2 is re-injected in combination with new CO2 from the gas plant pipeline. Eventually, nearly all of the CO2 will remain trapped in the reservoir. The CO2 methodology is very similar to what other oil companies use. One thing that we do that's slightly different is if you look at Bell Creek, you'll notice there are no pumping units. You just see these small wellheads with small buildings around them. And that's really because most of our reservoirs are very high quality 
so fluids move through them very easily. And so when we pressure them up, we can get the flow rates that we need without artificial lift. Denbury has upgraded the existing field, removing aging tanks and pump jacks. Instead of opening new fields in new areas, Denbury is maximizing oil production in the established Bell Creek field. By the time we started the CO2 flood in 2013, that production had declined to about 750 barrels a day, which was less than 1% of Montana's total production. Within three years, Bell Creek was producing more than 5% of Montana's annual oil production, with two-thirds of development left to go. Bell Creek is a big field, probably going to have 30, maybe more million barrels that we can recover there. It's still in the growth stage. It will continue to be a good producer. At present projections, the EOR operation would store more than 14 million metric tons of CO2. That's equal to the average annual carbon dioxide emissions of 3 million cars. We started CO2 injection in 2013, and we anticipate that we'll be CO2 flooding for somewhere between 15 and 20 years by the time we're finished, depending on how fast we choose to develop the field. Denbury has revitalized the Bell Creek field using CO2 from human activities. This CO2 flood is the first step in their regional vision. Bringing in that pipeline infrastructure allows us, of course, to then develop other fields, whether the ones we own or potentially own in the future. It gives us the umbilical cord, if you would, to allow us to develop other fields within the Rockies.